And I'm the president of California Family Council, and alongside our friends at the National March for Life, we are absolutely thrilled to welcome you here to the third annual California March for Life. We would like to start our program with prayer, so I would like to welcome up Pastor John Randall. He is a pillar of the Southern California pro-life community. We've been privileged to work with him a lot over the last year, and he is going to be opening this rally in prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And God, we pray today as we stand here united, Lord, in the cause of the unborn, Father, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon us and that every word that is spoken from this platform today, Lord, would be used in a powerful way and that from this gathering, you would start a revival, Lord, that would start here in Sacramento, move inside that building all around the state, Lord, that you would bring people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as the only way to salvation, the author, the giver of life, and that lives would be saved not only now, but throughout all of eternity. And Lord, we ask these things collectively together in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor John. So I know the Bible says make a joyful noise to the Lord, but I'm not sure that's what they were talking about. So that's okay. We're going to press forward because you know that if they did not fear us, they wouldn't be doing this. Amen? I am so grateful to be inviting, for the first time joining us at the March for Life, representatives from Trail Life USA, Troop 1613, to present our nation's flag, along with the California flag, and to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And then following them, we will hear from my good friend, Jonathan Alexander, an attorney with Liberty Council in Washington, DC. He's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So please welcome both Jonathan Alexander and Trail Life Troop 1613. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Troop, present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Under God, under God, under God, under God, under God, under God, under Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting. In 
the land of the free and the home of the brave, the brave. Well, if that doesn't get your blood pumping, thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, Trail Life Troop 1613. Next, I would like to welcome up our good friend, Allie Beth Stuckey. Many of you know Allie Beth from her amazing podcast and YouTube video series, Relatable. She's also an author, a commentator, frequent guest on pro-life topics, and she is going to bring a wonderful message of why it's so important to stand for life here in the Golden State. Thank you, and please welcome Allie Beth Stuckey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank the protesters in the back for the sirens. They must recognize what an emergency it is that abortion, and not just abortion, but infanticide is on its way to being legalized in the state of California. So thank you for understanding the urgency. I'm glad you're here. I hope that you'll learn something. So your beloved governor, Gavin Newsom, just tweeted just a few minutes ago that Walgreens on Friday said that it will not distribute abortion medication in 20 states. And as you can imagine, Gavin Newsom did not have the same reaction that we have, which is celebration. He said that the state of California will no longer do business with Walgreens because of this. So passionately pro-abortion is Gavin Newsom. So passionate is he about the dismemberment and the poisoning of babies made in the image of God that he is actually willing to sever the relationship between the state of California and Walgreens. The truth is Walgreens is already shutting down across the state because of his failed leadership. He doesn't want to talk about that. Newsom can whine about this all he wants to, but the truth is you helped make that happen. We not, might not be just yet, just yet changing the full political landscape in the state of California, but that does not mean that your voices and your efforts are fruitless. It was your phone call, it was your words, it was your courage, it was your bravery, it was your raising a respectful but relentless ruckus for the things that matter that finally pressured Walgreens to do the right thing and make it a little bit harder for women to have access to the kind of substances that poison their children. It just goes to show that the battle over abortion it's not done. It's not even close to done. In fact, it is just now heating up. In fact, especially in places like California, this is just the beginning. As states like California are targeting pregnancy centers, the only places that are actually giving women a choice, and not just that, but helping them meet their physical, and not just their physical needs, but also their spiritual and emotional needs, also trying to decriminalize and fantasize, it is up to us to, at the very least, make it as difficult as possible to do those things, as uncomfortable as possible for them to do those things. And I know that sometimes it might feel hopeless and demoralizing and worthy of despair in the state of California, but remember that it was only a few years ago that even most pro-lifers said Roe v. Wade is here to stay. Most pro-lifers even said there is no way that Roe v. Wade will ever be overturned. And yet after 49 years of persistence, 49 years of the unseen and unsung work of pro-lifers, in the face of harassment, in the face of lies, in the face of slander and libel and persecution and violence, after 49 years, the relentless work of pro-lifers concluded in the overturning of Roe v. Wade. 
So do not tell me that things can't change. Do not tell me that the situation, even here in the state of California, is hopeless. Never doubt what God can and will do through the persistent obedience of those willing to do the right thing. This has been true, by the way, throughout the history of the Christian church. It has been Christians who have been leading the way and fighting for and advocating for the most vulnerable, championing the value and the worthiness of people made in the image of God. And Christians, believe it or not, have been up against even greater obstacles than the ones that we are facing today, even greater challenges, even more wicked tyrants. And yet, by the grace and power of God, they slowly but surely, Christians, revolutionized how the pagan world regarded human beings and human rights. And the same gospel they had then, the same spirit derived strength that they had then, the same love of Christ that they had then, we have now. And if these things were good enough to embolden Christians under Nero, these things are good enough to embolden us under Newsom. So keep going, keep going. You have no idea what a powerful and good and sovereign God is doing with every single step of your obedience in the way of protecting the most vulnerable. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Allie Beth. And I will say, if you guys do not follow Allie Beth on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, her, her, everything she puts out is just phenomenal. Uh, she just did a phenomenal interview with a pregnancy center director that is a must watch. I encourage you all, go follow Allie Beth on social media. Uh, next, part of the reason that we do the march here on the steps of the Capitol is because the people inside that building, number one, there's two groups of people inside that building. There's people that need to hear your voice because they're doing the wrong thing. But just as important, there's people in there that need to hear your voice because they are doing the right thing. And I want to say there is a small but mighty group of men and women inside that building that is fighting to defend the sanctity of human life. There's a small but mighty group of legislators in that building behind us that believe life begins at conception and every child deserves life. And I'm so grateful to bring to the stage one of those champions for life, a man that I've been privileged to know since, uh, well, I won't say how old I was, but I'll say uh, for the last 30 years. I first met him when he was running for mayor of Fresno in 1992. And he is now an assembly member in his last term, Assemblyman Jim Patterson from Fresno. He is a bold and courageous defender of life. We are thrilled to have Assemblyman Jim Patterson with us. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the invite to be here. Uh, I want to tell you something. We're doing something right. And we are getting the attention of people who are doing something wrong. And you know, we have a message to them. We're not going away. We're growing stronger every day. And we will continue to live pro-life everywhere we are in every set of circumstances because we are going to be a witness for life and there will be saved babies. And I want to tell you the story of the Patterson family. Sharon and I are adoptive parents. We had fertility issues and God had a different plan for us. It was to adopt. My first son, BJ, is Vietnamese. He was orphaned in Vietnam. At 18 months old, he was left on the side of the road outside of Saigon. As Saigon was falling and the GIs were leaving Vietnam. Two American GIs who were in the midst of war, living what it means 
to be pro-life. They found him on the side of the road. They picked him up in their arms and took him to a Catholic orphanage. And he stayed there until President Ford sent the C-5As over to Vietnam and he was flown back to us. He is 50 years of, of age. He's a plumbing contractor in Fresno. Live pro-life all the time because God's going to have an intersection for you with something that will be historic. You will be a part of answered prayer. Our second child, Jason, was a county baby. So we had an, an international adoption. He was a county baby. His birth mother was 16 years old. His birth father was 16 years old. Under the pressure of the era, the birth mother's mother and father arranged for an abortion in Los Angeles, got her a ticket, gave her the money, and sent her to Los Angeles. Something happened along the way. Somewhere in that young 16-year-old's life, somebody lived pro-life in front of her. Somehow, when she went down there, what was growing inside of her meant something, and it somehow brought her to the point where she said, I'm going back home. I can't do this. And that 16-year-old birth mother and the 16-year-old birth father went through counseling together, had an adoption plan. And when Jason was born, we picked him up at eight weeks old, and we took him home. Live pro-life. You can do it even though you're not recognized and you're nameless and faceless in it but your influence will change the hearts and the lives of people who are coming to grips with this ultimate and absolute choice that ends a growing human being. Now the story of Lindsay. Lindsay is my daughter. Her birth mother was 37 years old. They lived up in Oregon. And I got a call from a family friend who said, are you considering another adoption? Well, sure, sure. We took care of her expenses. She was in uh, Lincoln City, Oregon, little tiny hospital. And she was about to deliver and Sharon and I went up to Lincoln City. Two weeks before her due date, she decided to be two weeks late. So we lived in Lincoln City for a month. We went to dinner the night before Lindsay was born with she and her other family members. And when I got the word that we were going to adopt a third child, I happened to be in uh, Hong Kong. I was mayor at the time and on a trade mission that was set up by Bill Jones, who was the Secretary of State at that time. In Hong Kong at that time, you could buy a really nice ring that was pretty inexpensive, and I bought one for Sharon and brought it home. And I gave it to her and I said, honey, I want you to wear this. I was in, uh, you know, Hong Kong. The call came and I, I, this is joyful. We went to the bedside of Judy, Lindsay's birth mother, as she was preparing to hand Lindsay to Sharon and we were to go home on the train. Lindsay, I believe, touched by the spirit of God took the ring off her finger and placed it on the pillow and said, Judy, this is for you. Wear it in remembrance of what this gift to us has meant and our promise and commitment to raise Lindsay in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. About six months later, we got a mail in the mail, a, a little note. And she said, kind of hard to wear that ring. And then now, I, now I'm wearing it a little bit more. And I, now I wear it all the time. It reminds me she's in a place of love. It reminds me that she's got a mom and a dad. 
it reminds me that she is loved and cared for. Thank you for this. I'll wear it for the rest of my life. But when she was in Lincoln City, she went to the first doctor's appointment. The doctor confirmed the pregnancy and then said, 37 years old, that could be kind of difficult. Can we set you for an abortion? Not Judy. Again, she got up, left, went down the little street in Lincoln City, three blocks down to another doctor, walked in, had the pregnancy test, and the doctor, who happened to be a Seventh-day Adventist Christian pro-life man, gave her the test and said, can I help with an, ado an adoption? Can I, can I help you work through all of this? Somebody, somewhere, was pro-life at a time when Judy needed it. And so my encouragement to you is that crowd with the sirens is a testimony to how effective you are. Keep being effective. You are the intersection between the sovereignty of God and his hand of grace that is touching that unborn baby. And you'll never maybe know the name, but because you were faithful, there is life. And despite the noise over here, there is a noise one day in heaven where we will hear the noise of the joys of the praise of those little babies who the Lord adopted and is living with now. God bless you all. You keep doing it. You are making real history and you are saving lives. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Assemblyman Patterson. And I also wanted to make sure that you see behind us, I mentioned the legislators that are doing the right thing. And we have a group of them behind us right now. Uh, Assembly member Joe Patterson. <laughs> Assembly member Devin Mathis. <laughs> Assembly member Bill Asaley. <laughs> Senator Brian Dolly. Assemblymember Megan Dolly and Assemblymember Tom Lackey. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your bravery and your courage. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Next, I want to bring up someone who is a former member of the legislature, and she actually was our recipient last year at California Family Council's gala of our 20th anniversary, our 20th anniversary gala. She is our Legislator Emeritus Award recipient. We give that award to someone who is a past legislator, not currently in office, but someone through their career who has demonstrated a commitment to life. And I, have a, I could give a huge long testimony about everything she's done but I just want to introduce my friend, former state senator, Melissa Melendez. protesting us. Do you know why they're here? Because they finally, finally figured out what you're capable of. They finally figured it out and that's why they're here because Roe v. Wade is no longer the law of the land. They lost. They lost. And they're not happy about it. And that is why they are here to try to drown out your voice to try to drown out my voice when I was in the legislature. But you know what? You can't drown it out. You just cannot drown it out. In that building behind me, there is a majority of legislators who don't want to hear what you have to say about life, who don't want to hear what you have to say about the policies that you think should be put in place. And no matter how many sirens 
they sound off, no matter how loud it is, it's never gonna drown out our voice. Because you know what happens, right? Persistence, no matter how many times they knock us down, we get right back up. And it paid off in dividends. So you, you should be proud of yourselves for never giving up, for believing, not letting people convince you that, oh, it's not worth it. Oh, it'll never happen. Roe v. Wade will be here forever. They were wrong. And it's because of people like you. So I want to thank you for what you've done. I'm a mom of five kids. I was blessed with five kids. And they are a gift from God most days. That no. <laughs> They are a gift from God, and I just wish everybody could understand that, but they don't, and that's our job to help them see that. So I thank you for what you do. Thank you for marching together with us. Thank you for standing up for life. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Melendez. Next, I'd like to welcome up representing our, our friends at the National March for Life, uh, Felicia price -Nor. She is the Vice President of Government Affairs for the March for Life. She lives there in Washington, D.C. and does a phenomenal job of advocating for all of our values there at a national level. Felicia, thank you for being with us. Hello, Pro-Life California. Woo! <laughs> Nearly three years ago, we started the California March for Life. And if you had told me those three short years ago that we'd be celebrating today the end of Roe v. Wade, I would not have believed you. I did not think we'd see this moment in our lifetime. So this is a moment to celebrate. But this is not the end. Not the end. As we saw with Proposition 1 in California, there's so much more work that we need to do. That proposition legalized abortion up until the moment of birth for healthy unborn children. We must continue to act. We must continue to boldly march, not only here in Sacramento, but in Washington, D.C. The Supreme Court left the power to the American people in the Dobbs v. Jackson decision. That means our elected representatives need to represent our interests and the interests of the unborn. Today, you have the opportunity to advocate for life. You have the opportunity to send a message to our legislators that life matters, that mothers matter, that babies matter. They are currently attacking our trusted and valued um, pregnancy resource centers here in California. AB 315 is a piece of legislation that's currently being considered. It will subject pregnancy care centers to frivolous and needless litigation that will tie up valuable resources that we should, should be going to mothers and children in need, providing them with free prenatal um, care and counseling, providing them with free ultrasounds, providing them with car seats. I mean, all the beautiful services that pregnancy care centers provide throughout California. So what I need you now is we need to send a message to the legislators that we will not stand for this. We will not let them attack the one thing that is beautiful about California. These pregnancy, well, there's many things beautiful here, but the pregnancy care centers provide this valuable, valuable treatment for the unborn and mothers. So please get your cell phone out now, right now. Let me see you guys. You might already have it out. But what I'm asking you to do in order to send a message to all of your California legislators is to text C-A-M-A-R-C-H, so C-A March, to 73075, and you'll see it on these signs next to me. By doing this, you're committing to helping women and children in need. We need to let them know that Californians support women, children, families. Our movement is a movement of love and compassion and hope so much hope. In California, there is hope. So please text 73075 to CA March. And I want to just quickly say my defense of the unborn started at a march slightly bigger in Washington, D.C. as a small child when my mom would take me in, as some of you may know, through snow, sleet, rain, and the sense of justice was instilled in my heart. 
And when I was practicing law, I knew it wasn't enough. And I felt called to something bigger, to something more. So I left behind my legal career, and now I spend every day defending the unborn and working to protect life, not only in Washington, D.C., but in the States. But I want to challenge all of you today. You all can do the same thing. After you march, you can meet with your California legislator, whether it's your staff or a member, that's okay. But let our message be known that we care for women, that we want to protect the unborn, that we have the love, compassion, and healing within our movement. So please, please take a moment, meet with your members, but also a critical thing in our movement is volunteering if you not, are not already with pregnancy resource centers. So let me just leave you with, let's leave here today energized to spread the love and compassion and healing that is the pro-life movement. Let us not stop until every woman child, born and unborn, is cherished and protected in our laws and in society. I like to just say a special note of gratitude to Jonathan Keller and the amazing team at the California Family Council for helping put on this amazing event. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Felicia. It really is a privilege to be able to partner with our friends at the National March for Life. I know I've been with California Family Council for the last 10 years, and as we mentioned, this is the third annual California March for Life. And by God's grace, this will not be the last. It is just getting started. I want to introduce a new friend. Some of you may be familiar with her work from EWTN, Pro-Life America. She is a writer, speaker, broadcaster. Uh, I'm sorry, EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. Sorry, Catherine, I, I get the titles wrong. Catherine Hadro is on the board also of Obria Medical Clinics that are based here in California, but they are a national pro-life medical clinic group. And Catherine is a passionate defender of the sanctity of human life. We are thrilled to have her speaking with us here at the California March for Life. Welcome, Catherine Hadro. Hello, California. It is a beautiful day to march for life. As Jonathan said, my name is Catherine Hadro. I'm the founding television host of EWTN Pro Life Weekly. And this fall, I had the privilege to serve as the spokesperson for California's No on Proposition 1 campaign. As you all know, Proposition 1 did unfortunately pass here in California, meaning post-viability, late-term abortion without limit is legal here in California and is paid for by your taxpayer dollars. It is devastating that this is the new law of the land, but, but, I still see the light here in the Golden State. Why? California is a sacred land. This is the state with cities named after both the angels and the saints, where St. Junipero Serra created several missions stretching from San Diego to San Francisco. And here, right now, we're standing in the city of Sacramento. Sacramento, which lest we forget, is named after sacrament, an outward sign of inward grace. This can serve as a reminder for us all that filled with his grace, we must then be an outward sign for our world right now, each one of us. We must speak truth to our confused culture. Inspired by those who came before us here in California, today we must be the modern day prophets. G.K. Chesterton said that in an upside down world such as ours, the prophet is the one who stands on his head so that he might see things aright. Friends, our world is upside down right now. California will pay for a woman to travel here, will pay for her plane, her Uber, her hotel, so that ultimately the state will pay for her to abort the life of her own child. Don't be mistaken, the world is upside down right now, and the world needs us to be modern day prophets. I really believe that for the pro-lifers here, it is a calling to be in California. 
Yes, you, you could relocate or you can stay here and you can fight for life. To be in California right now in the year of our Lord, 2023, is a calling. California is mission territory when it comes to the pro-life issue. Late-term abortion is legal here. Assisted suicide is legal here. The state with the most children in foster care is here. We need you. We need you pro-lifers to persist, to persevere, and to pray so that this California culture can be transformed, which we know that it can be. The Catholic community in particular has been shaken in recent weeks with the tragic shooting death of Los Angeles Bishop David O'Connell. We have been brutally reminded about the preciousness and the fragility and the gift of each and every human life and the gift of each and every moment here. The late Bishop O'Connell was involved in pro-life work here in California. And during a 2020 prayer vigil outside of a Planned Parenthood, he called for a change of heart in our country, in our church, in our people, a change of heart, he said, to receive the gift of new life of the unborn. My friends, let us all take up this calling in California so we can bring that change, bring that golden light to the darkness and bring a culture of life to a culture of death. Let us today march for life. Thank you, Catherine. It is so true. Being in California is a calling. Now, look, I'm not saying that it's easier to be pro-life in some other states, but I will say that your work here in California, like Catherine said, is so, so needed. We are the forefront of the battle for life in not just the United States, but I think even in the world. That is why we are doing the California March for Life. That is why we're so grateful to partner with all these great organizations that have booths around us today. And it's why I'm really grateful for the faithful witness of these next two speakers that I want to introduce to you, Heidi Matsky and Don Hughes. So Heidi is the Executive Director of Alternatives Pregnancy Center, which is a women's health clinic here in Sacramento. I think, I think some of you might know them. They were founded in 1983 and they provide free medical care and alternatives to abortion while proclaiming the hope of the gospel. Uh, some of you might have seen last year, July of 2022, there was a hearing in the United States Judiciary Committee because, the Senate Judiciary Committee, because there was a wave of violence from our tolerant and compassionate friends on the other side. They were vandalizing pregnancy centers. They were threatening medical doctors. They were trying to silence the voice of pro-life Americans. Heidi flew from Sacramento to Washington, D.C. to discuss abortion on the floor of the Senate, and she represented all of you phenomenally well. She's also a pastor's wife, and she's been doing pastoral ministry alongside her husband for over 25 years. And they have two children together, and they've also fostered many children over the years. Also speaking immediately after Heidi is Dawn Hughes. She is the CEO of Obria Medical Clinics and the Obria Group. She personally has over three decades of experience in healthcare. And she was recently before that a chief, uh, chief nursing at Prime Healthcare and chief clinical officer at NYC Health. Obria is a wonderful group. They provide healthcare all across our state, but also even around the country. And they have 20 affiliate clinics with locations in California, Georgia, Iowa, Texas, Oregon, and Washington. So please welcome Heidi and Dawn. Thank you. What an honor it is to be before you today to celebrate life and to proclaim life from our Capitol steps. My name is Heidi Matsky. Can I take this off? Okay. My name is Heidi Matsky and I'm the Executive Director of Alternatives Pregnancy Center here in Sacramento, California. I came into this role by a roundabout road that began in a very emotional place for me. A number of years ago, on the day my sister and I were supposed to leave for college, she showed up at my door and collapsed on the floor. 
With tears streaming down her face, she looked up at me and she said, you're never going to believe this, but I'm pregnant. I still remember the fear in my sister's eyes in that moment. Our medical team sees that fear almost every day in the eyes of the women that we serve. Many of them are desperate for help, desperate for hope, just needing someone to talk to, someone who will listen to their fears and struggles as they face their unplanned pregnancy. Despite the great work of pregnancy centers nationwide, as you have heard in the past year, we have faced much opposition. Here, especially in California, a great deal of misinformation has been spread about our clinics. Efforts appear to be underway in the US Congress to restrict or even outlaw crucial work of 3,000 pregnancy centers across this incredible country. If this happens, it would be a devastating blow to women throughout our country, as there are hundreds of thousands who come through our doors each year looking for free medical care, emotional support, and practical resources that will help them carry their pregnancies to term. It would also be a triumph of ignorance about who we are and what we do, about the reality of what choice means for women in America today. Women deserve an alternative to abortion clinics. Let me say that again. Women deserve an alternative to abortion clinics. If a woman is unsure of whether she wants to carry her pregnancy to term or not, she deserves a safe place to go. A place that does not financially gain from the choice she makes. This is real choice. Despite misinformation, let me share with you what we really do. We offer the women who come to us pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, prenatal care up to 24 weeks, well woman visits. We test and treat for sexually transmitted diseases. We offer abortion pill reversal services and abortion recovery for women who have actually experienced abortion, helping them heal from that experience, as well as parenting classes. If finances are a problem, we have diapers, wipes, baby formula, baby food, baby clothing, and baby supplies. We offer community resources and adoption referrals. And if a woman needs a hotel room, guess what? We'll pay for that too. It doesn't matter who she is. It doesn't matter where she comes from. It doesn't matter her past. We care for her right where she's at. If she wants to hear them, we explain to her all of her options, parenting, adoption, and abortion. Even if she chooses abortion, we continue to be there for her after that procedure, because guess what? Planned Parenthood isn't. Our clinic alone provides over a million dollars in free medical care each and every year to women. We charge nothing and we do not receive a dollar of federal funding to make this a reality. Because our God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. That means we never financially benefit from any choice a woman makes. Ironically, in the past many, uh, in the past, many patients have been referred to us by a well-known abortion provider near our clinic. As a matter of fact, in 2020, during the pandemic, abortion clinics shut down all their services except for abortions. Because our services were free, they actually sent women to us so that our nurses could sign off on pregnancy verification forms. That year, we were on mission like never before. As a matter of fact, we intercepted nearly 283 women who were abortion bound yet ended up choosing life. At our center, ultrasounds and all other services are provided by staff of licensed medical professionals, including OBGYN doctors, nurse practitioners, practitioners, registered nurses, medical assistants, and phlebotomists. They are deeply compassionate people because most of them that serve in our clinics have experienced abortion for themselves. And as a matter of fact, our OB doctor used to perform them until God got a hold of his heart. And now he's used as a weapon against the enemy. 
Over the last five years, pregnancy care centers like ours have served nearly two million women who have faced with an unplanned pregnancy and wanted an alternative to abortion. These facts are not being reported, nor do many government officials even really care. Instead, whether from ignorance about who we are or from spreading deliberate misinformation about what we do, pregnancy care centers from coast to coast, as you have heard, have been the targets of violent attacks, vandalism, hateful attacks online, and in the media. But, when the, but what the enemy intends for evil, our God will use for good. He will use it for his glory, and we trust him. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. And we are on mission like never before. What we do is worth the risk every single day. There is a place for clinics like ours in every community. Let me be clear about something. There are several types of women that come through our doors. In the past five months, let me just tell you about the stories of the women that have come through our doors. One woman serving, uh, uh, one woman we served in college facing an unplanned pregnancy but wanted to choose life and needed help. Another woman was in an affair, scared, to, to choose life and tell her husband about her unplanned pregnancy. Another woman who was pregnant didn't have insurance. Guess what? We saw her regardless. A lesbian couple that was rejected by Planned Parenthood walked through our doors because they didn't want an abortion but wanted to see an ultrasound. We served a transgender person unexpectedly pregnant and scared because they had been taking testosterone. Yes, they walked through our doors and found medical care and the gospel as they were rejected by other clinics. And just recently, just recently, we have served a woman who started, who had started transitioning into a man, but decided because she found grace in Jesus Christ that she no longer wanted to do this, but she did not want to go back to the doctors who ruined her of her womanhood. And she is now reclaiming her womanhood back for God's glory. Guess what? She came to our medical clinic for that. Yes, pregnancy centers are there for women in unplanned pregnancies, but we are also there for women like these, women in real situations, that have fit, these are women that have walked through our doors in the last five months. We have incredible influence in the lives of women. This is a place where women are encouraged. They are not exploited in their moment of vulnerability. You are pregnant. Those are the most powerful words a woman will hear in her life. For some, the words bring incredible joy, but for others, incredible fear. Both deserve support. We have been given a tremendous opportunity and responsibility by God himself to serve and empower women to live full, successful lives. It is an honor to wake up each morning to serve women and families in my community. And I thank you for the privilege of allowing me to share this brief glimpse of who pregnancy centers really are, despite what you've been told. If you do not currently financially support a local clinic, I urge you to do so. Here in Sacramento, there is the Sacramento Life Center, our clinic, Alternatives Pregnancy Center. In Roseville, there is Sierra Pregnancy and Health. In Placerville, there is Pregnancy Counseling Services and many beyond Sacramento County. We desperately need your prayers, your encouragement, and your support. And as I close, I want to leave you with a verse found in 1 Peter chapter 2. It says this, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you might follow in his steps. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore his sins in his body on a tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, we are healed. Christ was on mission, pursuing those who are broken and in desperate need of help. There was no deceit found in him, yet he suffered anyway. He took away our shame and our sin. He bought us back from death, 
redeeming us out of the hand of the enemy. He suffered, he was reviled against, he was hated, and he was mocked. Yet he did not revile and hate in return. Instead, he stayed on mission and loved with a sacrificial love unlike anything this world has ever seen. We must do the same. When we are reviled against, we will not revile in return, but instead we will entrust our enemies into the Father's hand and stay on mission no matter what the cost is. He has called each of us to rescue those who are being led to slaughter. That is why each and every one of us are here today, and we will fulfill that calling together. God bless. Welcome as we fight for life. I am marching to pro post row America to empower women. I march because women deserve better health care. I march for women to have the right to life affirming health care. Yes. Every woman deserves to be heard and supported with unconditional love, especially in this time of vulnerability. Obria Medical Clinics are comprehensive medical clinics with services provided by licensed medical professionals. We are in six states with 21 clinics. These medical professionals provide quality, life-affirming care with love and compassion every day. The post-row environment will be one when the services of Obria clinics are needed now more than ever. California, where many of our clinics operate, is known as an abortion sanctuary state. Those two words should never be used in the same sentence. We are here to make sure that that doesn't happen. We are going to give the sanctuary to the women in clinics that are filled with love and healing. We anticipate that there will be many women traveling to California and other sanctuary states like New York, Connecticut and Illinois. We also see an increase in the number of women that will be seeking answers. This is why these clinics exist. This is why we're here to give them real answers and real truths. This reality puts Obria and the other clinics in the forefront of a joyful mission. We save lives. The dominant culture, as we can all hear from the back of the room, um, mocks, drowns out, and tries to vilify hair, care from a pro-life perspective. <laughs> no. Many women, unfortunately, have been indoctrinated in the decades of lies from Roe and do not know what life-affirming health care is and what it looks like for pregnant women and the support and unconditional love that they receive from these clinics. We will be a key player in educating women about how they can choose outstanding health care that respects not only their babies, but their womanhood. Yes. The Dobbs decision gives a pro-life health care community the opportunity to re-engage with women about sexual health choices that are grounded in the dignity of womanhood and that the reality that abortion is just not a choice with no consequences but one that ends the life of a baby and brings physical and emotional harm to that woman. We get to provide clinical services and provide medical facts about pregnancy to women who are scared, confused, and convinced by society that abortion is just another choice with no consequences. We know this choice ends a life. None of us were here. We are here for the right to life. And as the CEO of Obria Medical Clinics, I work every day to ensure that our clinics are giving comprehensive and compassionate care to our communities and reminding women that they've got this and Obria's got them. My dream is that the light and love of Obria Clinics and other clinics like them will replace the darkness and the lies of the last 50 years where we had a bad national standard. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi, and thank you, John. So, 
We're getting ready to march, but before you do that, we have a couple final closing speakers, and I wanted to make sure before you actually start marching and you walk away from these signs, if you have not already texted CA March to 73075, pull out your phone, do that now. If you're videotaping or taking photos, I, I love that, that's great. But we also are recording the entire rally. It's also live streaming on Facebook. So you will be able to share this with all of your followers, all of your friends, all your family, all your church members, everybody else. Just take a minute and text CA March, all one word, CA March to 73075. Next, we have two phenomenal speakers, two women who have different experiences, but both represent the miracle of what happens when each one of you speak up and reach out. I want to introduce you to Isha Smith and Jennifer Milborn. Isha Smith is a mother who was considering a third trimester abortion, but through the help of our great partners and friends at Love Life, chose life for her beautiful baby. In addition to Isha Smith, we have Jen Milborn, who is a survivor of a vacuum aspiration abortion. She works for Abortion Survivors Network as their community engagement coordinator. She is confident that God saved her life before birth for a greater purpose. So we're going to have Jen start and then Isha Smith after. Jen, thank you for being here. Hey, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm going to yell if that's okay with you. So my name's Jennifer Milborn, and I'm an abortion survivor. In the spring of 1978, I survived a vacuum aspiration abortion. My birth mother asked her sister to drive her to a clinic in Illinois, but thankfully, due to the size of my head at the time, the abortion failed. A few years ago, I met a former abortionist, Dr. Kathy Altman, who now speaks and advocates for life. We spoke and became friends. She told me that crushing the skull to finish the abortion was in practice at the time, but wasn't as common then as it is today. She said that if she had been my abortionist, she would have been able to complete the abortion, which means I wouldn't be alive or my children wouldn't be alive. Abortion is the only medical procedure that when a doctor fails, a life is saved. Still today, babies survive abortions. The CDC has estimated that 400 to 500 babies survive failed abortions per year. Abortion survivors were occurring before Roe v. Wade, and they will continue to occur. The reality of abortion is that the procedure is ending a life, stopping a heart from beating. I am the voice the abortion industry wants to silence. Today, I can say with confidence that I completely forgive my birth mom. She was not a monster, but a victim of the abortion industry. She fell for a lie that abortion is health care and it removes a clump of cells. But I am proof that the abortion is not health care because I am not a disease that needs to be taken care of. I share my story because for 25 years, I thought my survival was just a freak thing that happened to me. I felt utterly alone, unwanted, and unlovable. God saved my life, and I have a purpose and destiny to be the voice for those who the abortion industry want to silence, no matter how small and inconvenient. Abortion not only destroys a baby's life, but it also harms the mother, the father, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. If any of you have had an abortion, both of us are victims, and I want you to know that I am here for you today as well. The, there are people throughout the U.S. and the world with similar survival stories just like mine. When I found this group of fellow survivors, I joined them. They are the Abortion Survivors Network. My husband and my children have been my greatest supporters. My children are also survivors. They are second generation abortion survivors because abortion has a generational impact. If they could be up here with me today, they would tell you how grateful they are to be alive with all of you. 
I really need you guys to just hear one thing I have to say today. Abortion is the only medical procedure that when a doctor fails, a life is saved. It is not health care. I was not a disease that needed to be taken care of, nor are any of you or any of the babies that are coming to be. Thank you. Hello, my name is Isha Smith, and I am a mother of two beautiful children. This is my daughter, Remini, and this is my son, Ryder. And this is my story. I grew up in foster care and did not have a close relationship with my parents. I was emancipated, and I tried to bridge my relationships with my family as an adult when I moved to Stockton. When I moved to Stockton, I met a man, and I got pregnant shortly after. I ended up making the bulk of my pregnancy and decisions on my own and raising my sweet daughter as a single mom. Things did not go so well for me in Stockton. As hard as I tried, I became homeless and sometimes even slept in my car. I maintained communication with my child's father, but I was mostly on my own. I found out I was pregnant with my second child when I was around six months pregnant. This news was very shocking to me, and as I had no idea, I did not know what to do, and I felt that I could not have another baby. I contacted Planned Parenthood, and because I was so far along in pregnancy, they referred me to a clinic in San Francisco where they do third trimester abortions. The description that they gave me made me sick. They contacted me at least five more times, but something in me would not let me go through with it. God. I went to Planned Parenthood for a pregnancy test to verification for my social worker to get prenatal care. I met a sidewalk counselor from Love Life. Her name is Sophia. She held my baby and began making calls for me to help me to get resources, to find another way to support myself and my daughter and my new unborn child. I've had my second son, I mean my second child now, who is two months old and he is here today. <laughs> oh my gosh. My mentor, Mercy, threw me a baby shower, and it was something that I did not experience with my first daughter. It was something very special to me because it actually helped me feel like I was doing something right. I ended up having my son early at 35 weeks, so he got to be there with us and got to celebrate his life. I was gathered around a bunch of ladies that, I, that made me feel truly cared for. Everything I needed was provided for me, and I felt really good. I was finally a part of something, a real family, included in life, you know? Before I met Sophia and the Love Life team, I did not know what I was going to do. I didn't know which way to go. I didn't know, I didn't know anything. I was misguided, I was uneducated about just this whole abortion and pregnancy and everything. Mm-mm-mm. <sighs> My story may have not been the same if I did not meet them. I named my son writer Israel because the name Israel means the one chosen by God. Yeah. When I read the meaning of the name, I felt like God has specifically chosen my son to be a part of my life and for me to meet these great people to help me support and take care of these kids and to deliver my son into this world. I can't wait to see what God has in store for me and my family and also the Love Life team because they have supported me all the way through this. I now have faith and hope and I know that God and through, all, and through God that all things are possible. <laughs> no problem. Thank you guys and I really appreciate everything that you guys are out here doing and just supporting 
My kids are living proof that no matter what anybody tells you, any woman out there struggling and just is miseducated about pregnancy and what to do and doesn't know what to do, you can do it. There is help out there. So don't be scared, don't be afraid. There's a lot of people out here that are willing to help. There's a lot of resources and all we gotta do is just keep fighting and keep striving for life and for these kids. That's why we do what we do, amen? Thank you, Isha. Thank you, Love Life team. Thank you, Jen. Man, has this been a great rally? So I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm feeling like a, a couple of little something coming from the sky. So we're about to wrap up, but I have two final speakers for you. First off, I wanna welcome back to the stage my good friend, Lila Rose. Now. Lila needs almost no introduction. I think most of you know her. She is the founder and president of Live Action. I see many of you have her great Love Them Both signs right there. Uh, she is a dear friend. I'll just give a point of personal privilege. We were talking off stage. Uh, Lila founded Live Action, and I had the incredible privilege and honor of meeting with her when she was first founding Live Action 20 years ago. Lila at the time was a, when I got a, my first phone call from her, she was 14 years old and she had as much energy and passion for the pro-life cause as people, not just double, but triple or quadruple her age. She was an incredible advocate even back then and she and her husband Joe and their, the entire team there at Live Action are absolute stalwart defenders of the sanctity of life. We are privileged to welcome her back here to Sacramento for the California March for Life, my dear friend, Lila Rose. I want to tell you the story of a great state, a state of limitless opportunity. Brave settlers charted a rocky course through mountains and deserts, through snow and ice, to make it there. There they found beauty unparalleled, rich earth, bountiful oceans. They built something incredible. They were adventurers, pioneers, and dreamers. They dreamt the California dream, and they built a state where people could prosper and flourish. 400 years ago, Missionaries also walked up and down this state, founding our California missions. They founded communities, small settlements built around faith, around churches, around family. A few of them you have even heard of. San Diego, named after St. Diego. San Francisco, named after St. Francisco. Los Angeles, named after the angels. And Sacramento named after the most blessed sacrament. These were once communities of shared purpose and identity. Their shared purpose made them great. Together they valued children and marriage, hard work, ingenuity and freedom. They practiced their faith and honored God. Today, we are 40 million souls strong in California, men, women and children. I, like many of you, are a proud daughter of California. We are daughters and sons. But in my lifetime, I have watched our state utterly destroyed by political leaders who despise the very things that make us great. Instead of inviting families to live the California dream and care for their children. Our governor is inviting families to come to California to kill their children. Proposition one just passed, permitting the slaughter of full term babies. And we are all complicit. Our tax dollars are being spent by our politicians who are killing our children. Our governor has just signed into law the mandate that every college in the state must distribute the lethal drugs that kill children, turning our dorm rooms into death chambers. 
We are killing our dream. We are killing our future. We have entered a nightmare. We have a choice before us today. Will we speak? Will we fight? Or will we flee? Don't leave California. Stay and fight. Take back this state. Victory is possible. We face a daunting challenge, but every daunting challenge is a limitless opportunity in disguise. In my father's lifetime, as a young boy growing up in California, we had a governor who had a radical conversion. Ronald Reagan once defended abortion in California. As, re as governor, he signed into law the permission of abortionists to destroy their prey. But then something happened. Change happened. Governor Reagan changed. He repented. He became pro-life. And as president of the United States, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation of the Unborn Child. He declared, as president of the United States, I do hereby proclaim and declare the unalienable personhood of every American from the moment of conception until natural death. California governors who become American presidents can change. Governor Newsom, repent. Open your eyes. Stop killing the California dream, the California promise. Stop killing our most precious, our children. Repent, wake up. Today, we send a message loud and clear to Governor Gavin Newsom and the corrupt politicians in this building who pretend that we do not exist, but we do exist. We are not going to going away. We will multiply. We send a message to the corrupt politicians who serve the abortion industry and the culture of death. We are not leaving. We will stay. We will multiply and we will take back this state. We will restore the California dream by being unapologetic and loud about the value of every human life. For our homeless, for our immigrants, for our addicted, for our elderly, for our pre-born, our young families struggling to make a life in a state that has forgotten their future. But their future is the only way for California's dream to come true. We will practice our faith. We will raise our families. We will build our businesses and communities and we will fight for the most defenseless. We are ready for you, Governor Newsom. Convert. California is not only our past. California is our future. Don't leave, fight. Man, can I get an amen? Thank you, Lila. That is the exact message. Don't leave, fight. And I am thrilled to welcome up to close out things. First off, I want to say I know we've got a little bit of, little bit of drizzle. We are going to march around the Capitol. We're very excited. I want to say before our closing prayer with uh, my good friend, John Girardi, I want to tell you, you're going to walk to my left, your right. We're going to walk all the way down there to in street and that's where we're going to enter the street to march around the capitol i want to thank all of you for being here if you can just remember as you're getting ready to leave pick up your trash please throw it away we want to make sure that we leave the grounds better than we found it thank you to all the organizations that came out here and joined us today we're so grateful to have such a wonderful turnout i want to remind you also some of you are planning to go if you have time and you're not leaving town right away go to your legislators offices we have information right next to the california family council booth our friends at eagle forum have roses that you can take with a message regarding some of the legislation we talked out about today ab 315 pick up a rose bring it with you and if you have time go place it at your legislators office let them know that you are standing for life and as lila said you're not going anywhere Next, I'd like to welcome up to close us out in a closing prayer, my good friend, John Girardi. He is the executive director of Right to Life of Central California and the CEO of Obria Medical Clinics of Central California. 
He and his wife, Holly, have five beautiful children. They're members of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church in Clovis. John, thank you for being here. Jonathan was about to say his social security number is 627. All right, everyone join me in prayer. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The 137th Psalm reads, by the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our lyres, for there our captors required of us songs and our tormentors mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Heavenly Father, you have put us here in this world on pilgrimage, on pilgrimage from the Babylon of sin and death towards your promised land. For 2,000 years, Christians have interpreted this psalm, this psalm of the, the Jewish people in exile in Babylon, as an allegory for the soul's journey from this world to the next, to our ultimate home in heaven. We ask you, Heavenly Father, guide all of us on this journey. Guide those whom we love, guide those who hate us and scorn us and oppose us. Bless all of us this day as we march in defense of life. Lord, we know California can seem like a Babylon. It is governed by the forces of sin and death. But we know that you have won the victory. We know that the promised land awaits us. We simply pray that we would be faithful and that we would do everything in our power to establish the kingdom of God here on earth and to guide all of us towards your kingdom, which is to come. Please bless all of us, bless this state, amen. Thank you, John Girardi. Everybody, I want to again say thank you. I realize it's a little bit wet, but again, I'm just speaking for myself. I'd rather have this than triple digits, just personally speaking. I want to thank all of you for being here. Again, we are going to be marching out to the left, my left, your right. If you can see me, I'm pointing over this way. And you're going to enter the street on N Street. Right directly behind us is 10th Street. You're going to march south along here, and when you get to N Street, you're going to see people that are going to be holding the banner and ready to enter the street there. Again, thank you all for being here. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you again soon for more pro-life activism here at the Capitol. God bless you.